right, so I've got my painting background set up here. You just want to set yourself a nice background tone. And I'm going to use a white charcoal pencil and start to sketch in. Basically, we are going to keep this pretty loose. So I'm just going to use circles to show where I'm going to put some flowers. And I'm going to do some different shapes in there for the leaves. This is going to be a loose abstract flower painting. And if you want to see a little bit more about uh, acrylic paint, how I set up my space and how I build myself the techniques, check the description below. I have all the links for all of those tips. But today I'm just gonna jump right into creating these abstract flowers. I'm gonna show you three different ones on this canvas. So right now the circles stand for where the different flowers are going to go. And then I've got some leaf shapes filling in this space. When we are painting loosely, we are going to add a bunch of different layers. And when we are adding those layers, we are going to start from background and move to foreground, which means we're going to start out with our leaves first. I'm not going to paint them as flat shapes. I'm really going to create dimension with my brush strokes and let those brush strokes be loose and free, which means I'm going to use a different kinds of greens. I'm also going to incorporate some blues into the color as well. Feel more free with the colors that you're choosing and have fun with this. The idea is to let go a little bit, let the abstraction give you a little bit more freedom in your painting of these flowers. Then I'll go into some specifics about painting different kinds of flowers. So what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm bringing in some lights and darks, but I'm creating a variety. I don't want to do it the same way in each section. I'm filling out the space that the leaves will go into, um, and I'm switching out the colors as well. So I want to have some different blues and greens in here. So you can see I have a variety out in my palette as I'm building this up. It's looking really rough right now, but as I add more colors, you're gonna to start to see a little bit more about how I slightly blend, but you don't wanna over blend with the style. You wanna keep it pretty loose, but you want to use <clears throat> lights and darks to separate where different shapes are going. You can see that the movement that I am creating is in the movement of the leaves that I first originally drew, and I'm creating different sections of lights and darks and different kinds of greens. So I started out with a darker blue and I'm gonna start going in with this lighter green. I'm gonna add some hints of yellow in there. You wanna create some variety. So this is where we really have fun with this loose painting and we feel it out. Now, if you are gonna come back to this painting another day the idea is that we're really mixing on the canvas here. We aren't making a bunch of colors on the side and then applying it. That's the idea of being really loose with your acrylic painting. That's what's going to give you a lot of success in this strategy. So write down the colors that you're using. So if you have to come back to them, you'll have the same kind of look. Our first flower is going to be a rose. So we're gonna begin with a base gradient. This is the beginning layer that we will build on all the other layers. So start with the red from the center of the rose and build your way out. I like to use my brush to build the petals out. I used a reference photo and I look at it to refer to highlights, shadows, and the different kinds of shapes of the petals to create variation so that it's not too repetitive and looks more realistic. 
Now look at how I keep sections in between my brush strokes. This is reserved for the middle tones and the highlights. The outer petals are always a bit lighter in color, so I start by using some light pink. This is my middle highlight. If the paint is still wet, you can lightly blend the colors and lightly bring them together. As I build my way out from the edge of the rose, I like to think of it as a spiral going from the center outward. Once I have those base layers complete, I add cool and warm tones to build the depth of the painting. This means that I'll be adding some blues to my red, and this is so perfect for shadows. But I keep it subtle just so it doesn't take away from the, my overall color choices of my rose. Unless you want like a deep purple kind of rose. And then I'm going to use a brighter pink mixed with a little bit of yellow to add some warmth in between the petals to add some richness to the painting. Think about it like this, as you build your outer layer and start to refine some of those shapes, you want to use your reference photo to see where there might be some imperfections or maybe something that disrupts the order and pattern. Most petals will fall into a nice pattern, but some break the pattern. Some might have a more jagged edge or you might only see a little of the side of a petal. These imperfections exist in real life and in nature and it makes your work look way more realistic. When you are first painting, you might depend on your reference photo a bit more, but after you paint more flowers, you'll start to understand this process a little bit more and you won't need to look at your reference as often, especially with something more abstract and free like this style. The final step is to add dark and light details. This is to show some contrast of any petals that may have gotten lost in the layers. You want to define where a petal ends and starts. So I take a smaller brush and I refine these petals, pulling out some bright white highlights, and I use my reference to decide anything else that I'd like to add to make my flower complete. Now I am going to begin by painting a peony. In my photo reference, I am looking at flowers in all different types of directions, but if you are a beginner, it's best to work with a front view. So choose one of the flowers that you can see from the front view. Now this process isn't going to be so different from the rose, but it does add some extra details to the process. Our first step is to create a base layer. I will start from the center of the flower with an orange color and then move on to some red in the center. I am keeping everything pretty loose instead of a controlled blending. I will slightly blend some of the colors together in my base layer as the paint is still wet. And on the outer edge of my flower, I will create a pink, and then I blend that in with the orange. This is the base layer for the petals that I'm going to build on top of. Now we are going to build the petals with a lighter pink, and I'm going to use a medium round brush. I really like the round brush because I can create a petal shape by pressing light at the edge, more pressure in the center, and then light again. This is a great technique to practice for almost any flower shape. All in the same brush stroke, we achieve a light touch for the painted ed pointed edge and then harder for a more full center of the stroke. These petals will spiral out from the center, smaller in the center and larger as we go outward, filling in each other's negative spaces. Step three is to add the details with both dark and light. In the center, I use a bit of blue with my red to create the shadow depth, and then I dab in bits of yellow in the center of the flower as well. Check out your photo reference to see how much or how little you want to add of that yellow. Now I'm going to add an even lighter pink for the highlights. These petals will go over the top of what I've already done. Adding these light layers helps build up and break up the shape, so it looks more like a peony. This is also how I like to create those imperfections that I talked about in the previous flower. Petals always change directions or interrupt the pattern in some way. So in order to make it look more realistic, take a look at your reference and see where does the shape switch up. And then with a smaller brush, I like to add small, more precise details, especially a nice bright white highlight to show the crisp edge of a flower petal to create some more contrast. 
For our last flower, we are going to paint a tulip. So when I'm painting the tulip, I'm gonna start out with the base layer, and I'm gonna do two different shapes. In my photo reference, I'm going to focus on some side views of the tulip. What I'm gonna do is start to build up some overlapping layers on the inside petals. Because the tulip is more closed than the other flowers, we are going to start from the inner petals and move outward. So those petals will show their own overlaps and shadows, and then the outside petals will create a nice closing around the inner petals. So they're going to cover parts of them. Take a look at your reference photo to figure out how these petals are going to change their shape. What are they going to overlap? Where is there going to be a shadow? For tulips, I definitely use my reference photo a lot more than my roses or my peonies. To finish up my floral painting, I'm going to fill in some gaps with some leaves and also add some contrast to a few of them, maybe move some forward, move some of them backwards using highlights and shadows in order to create a little bit more dimension and contrast. I really hope you enjoyed painting this floral scene. The idea is to be less controlled with our acrylic paints as we're just beginning and really bringing in some more free, expressive, layered brush strokes. This is all about being comfortable with layers, being com comfortable with seeing something evolve over time. Sometimes it needs a little bit more contrast or lights and shadows, so it takes some time and practice to really understand what your painting needs. But I hope you have fun with this process. It's really about being free and learning as you move through. I will have so many more videos of this kind of style, but it's really about jumping in and getting more comfortable with how you feel with acrylic paints.